any potential trades this offseason you expect? I, there's one that's very obvious to me, Trey Greenlaw, right off the bat. I don't think yep. he's dead. That's obvious. He's going to have to show that he's healthy, though. The interesting thing for me is, to me, the the motivator for trades in this season, I, I don't think they move any big names. That's just my gut feeling. I know that they could, but in my opinion, it, it's got to be two things have to be true. One, the 49ers believe themselves to be a Super Bowl contender. So if you're going to get rid of any key piece, any big name, you have to believe that you can replace them. You have to believe that that they don't factor into you being a Super Bowl caliber team. And I don't think that's true of any of the big names, or at least I don't believe the 49ers believe that to be true. I think it's the fringe players where you see some of this and it's got to be, I mean, it, it, it will illustrate just how tight the 49ers up against the, are up against the cap because they will get rid of players and bring in a rookie where they're only saving like four or $500,000. And that's the case with Trey, uh, Dre Greenlaw. His salary is going to be one mil, just over a million, 1.04. A rookie base salary minimum is 660. So at best, you're saving $350,000 with that move, but you're bringing in an asset. You're bringing in that sixth or that seventh round pick. So to me, Dre is the one that, that jumps off the page. <clears throat> Let's go to what Rob asked George Kittle. Will they trade George Kittle? Let's not dismiss this yet. No. Uh, let me bring up. Let's play it through up. on both sides. Yeah, let's bring up his contract. So he's going to be 30, maybe 30 this year. Uh, really? He's also going to, yeah, he's going to turn 30. I guess he'd be like 29, November. but. He just turns, I think he, hold on, let me see. George Kittle age. He's 28. All right, he'll be 29. I, I, I age him too aging the man. He's 28. Uh, his contract is going to go up to 16 million. He was at his cap number this year was five. That's going to go six. So he's finally going to be paying what they thought they'd be paying him. One more thing. Last six games of the season, he had fewer than 30 receiving yards five times Oof. and fewer than 20 receiving yards twice. He had, let me see, from the Tennessee game, he had two catches for 21 yards. Houston had one catch for 29. Rams, he had five catches for 10 yards. Dallas game, he had one catch for 18 yards. Green Bay, four catches for 63. NFC Championship, two catches for 27 yards and a touchdown. They're paying a lot of money for a guy who, for whatever reason, is not the center of their offense anymore. When they paid him, they thought he was. But now it's Debo. And I'm not really sure. Like, he's not the blocker he used to be. They don't use him as much as they do. And it's hard to justify spending $16 million on a tight end who's like your number two option on a run first team. And I, I think, I mean, this is me playing devil's advocate because I don't want fans to think that this is my actual opinion. This is just me working through some logic here, but considering you, you can't say about George Kittle, what you could say about Brandon Ayuk, which is, well, the quarterback switch is going to immediately make him a better threat. George Kittle's a pretty damn good fit for what the Niners like to do with Jimmy Garoppolo throw the ball over the middle, set him up for yards after the catch. And is he also a deep threat? Yes, certainly. I mean, there are some big passes that were missed that if Trey can hit those, all of a sudden George has 100 yards and a touchdown in several of those games, right? You, you look at his drop against Green Bay and then the overthrow against the Rams are the first two that, that come to mind. But again, like I just don't think that you can say his lack of production is because of Jimmy Garoppolo. And so you, you don't necessarily fix it by moving on. So I do think it's a, a valuable question to, to bring up. Is his because lack of- Because of Kyle. Kyle's the one calling the plays. He's the one right. calling all these plays for Jennings, Ayuk, Debo, and not for Kittle as much anymore as Kyle. Seems to me that Kittle had his- Jimmy loves throwing to Kittle. And, and Kittle campaigned for Jimmy to be the quarterback, it seems. And now he's not going to be there anymore. How's Kittle going to feel? He might be feel like he's on an island. I mean, they did just fire his position coach- that was his guy. They he he developed him, discovered him. That was his guy, and he's gone. What kind of what kind of message does that say? It's like having your immediate supervisor, who you're really cool with, get fired. Right. Like, well, damn, who's the new guy going to be? Maybe he won't like me. Yeah, I'm just the dead. guy who brought you in. And why would you fire my immediate supervisor? Is it something I did? What is what is it about the tight end room again? Like, of course, he wasn't fired, but. When you you know when you when you slash a guy's salary like that, he's not coming back if he has right. any ounce of self-respect. Right. You know. 
So, I mean, I'm not surprised. Anyway, no, no, you are essentially Kittle? firing him. You're, you're firing him by proxy. Will they trade Kittle? Probably not. But what if they put him in the Jimmy Garoppolo package? Trade them both. No, they're not going to do it. But I can understand why people are going there. It's starting to get weird. Jimmy's leaving. He fired his coach. He did. He, Kyle just forgot about him the last six games of the season. I mean, yeah. here and there they go to him, but basically you block. It's weird. It, the the interesting thing for me to consider is looking at his recent production versus the value that you could get in a trade and the money that you would free up emotionally i'm not prepared to even explore this as a real possibility george kittle to me is a part of the core of this team he's a part of the identity he he is everything kyle shanahan looks for in a player he's a nightmare matchup he's great in run blocking to me it's a non-starter but when you consider, when you take the emotion out of it and you consider what the 49ers could get and the production that they'd be, be giving up in letting him go, it's it's less black and white for me in, in those terms. Well, my question is, where is Kittle's head at right now? I mean, After, he just yeah. lost his coach. Yeah. He's going to lose his quarterback. You know, they really held his feet to the fire during those contract negotiations. God knows what they told him. It was very difficult for him to get that. It came down to the very end. There could be some link. They don't call his number anymore. They're phasing him out of the past game. He had three games of 100 yards this year. Three. And they played, what, 20 games? That's different than how they used to use him. I could see him being like, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to go somewhere. I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but my question no. is not, do the Niners want him? It's Does he want to be there? Uh, is he excited to play with Trey? Is he cool letting the having the entire offense go through Debo every week? That's all I want to know because he does have yeah, his own ego. That would change the equation for me. If if right. Kittle in any way is discontented, right. then then you would have to explore it. Yep. Anyone else that could possibly trade this offseason? I, I certainly think that that fans would want to throw the name Javon Kinlaw out there, but. I just don't know what you would get in return, right? I think that the upside, much like weighing D Ford and any production you could get for that 1.75 million that you would save in cutting him, I think that's what the Niners will be evaluating. Still think the Niners look at Armstead trade. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about that. I meant, I wanted to bring that up. We were supposed to do that. We were. Sorry, dude. Okay, let's go back. I'm going to bring the thing up. You can't count on me for short-term memory, Grant. You just can't. Me neither, man. That was bad. Okay. Armstead. Well, let's 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 bring up his contract real quick because I'm curious to see if he's going to get expensive yet. He might have one more year where he's not expensive. I want to say this year he's about what he should be paid. I think he's close to that 17 mil. Yeah, this year he's getting 12. Next year it's 20. Okay, so next year he's very expensive. And uh, the thing about Armstead is there is no question he has the ability to be dominant. We've seen it. We saw it in 2019. We saw at the end of 2021. He can do it. My problem with him is that it seems like he flips the switch and it's hard to say when he's going to flip it. And there are certain games where he's like totally not an impact player, like the NFC championship game. He didn't register a statistic, nothing, no tackles, nothing. And that's my issue with him there. He's way too good to have games like that. And to get paid $20 million as a defensive tackle, I feel like you're pretty much expected to give the same level of effort and impact every game. And I, that's never been him. Right? He's he's the guy who has high peaks and then weeks where you're like, dude, did he play? I don't know. I would consider it, yes, especially since he finished his season strong. Mike. The interesting thing to consider is because he moved primarily, I mean, because he's most effective at the interior spot, that makes him less valuable to the Niners as far as what he should be paid, right? A defensive tackle should be paid less than a defensive end as dictated by the league. But it also makes him less appealing to teams thinking of where they would plug him in. It's interesting to to wonder whether he just has more value as the Swiss Army knife that he is for San Francisco, where he can play along the line and Chris Koserik knows exactly what he's got with him. Am I pronouncing that correctly, by the way? Is it Koserik, Koserik. or Koserik? Koserik. Koser. Emphasis um, on the first select. I always question myself about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I think that he provides unique value to the 49ers because of his ability to play all over. You heard DJ Jones talk about that this season. I just don't know that another team would value that versatility the same way the Niners do. It might be Kasurik, actually. I have no idea. Now that you mention <laughs> it, I don't know. <laughs> I, 
I've been saying Costa Rica. I don't know. I love the how confident is, you were, and you're like, yeah, yeah, Costa it's Costa. Rica. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Uh, the thing about Armstead, I think, <clears throat> I don't think he's tradable. I don't think anyone wants to spend twenty million dollars a year on Armstead. I think everyone would agree that he's a good player, but is he that good? Do you want to trade a pick for the right to spend that much money on a guy who doesn't make an impact consistently? Yeah, Kittle. A lot of teams would want to spend sixteen million. A lot of teams would say, "Well, we don't have Debo. Right. We would love to feature George Kittle on our teams. Offense. Would bring line him up. over here. Yeah, teams would line up. And, and sixteen, I think Armstead. Uh, I think the Niners. That's it's like you, you're stuck with that. That's you. That's on you. And he's a prime candidate for a, a renegotiated contract to where you free up a little money, it gets creative, you give him a bunch of cash up front, and you make those numbers a bit more palatable.